The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 2 and 5 This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. The Bible is explicit about the events that will characterize the end time. The Bible refers to the end time as a perilous time, times of evil and difficulty. The major reason the end time is called perilous times is that the events that will characterize it will not be limited to the world, but the church will also be hit by its waves. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 4, Paul gives Timothy a long list of sinful behaviors and attitudes that will take over the character and behavior of people. And in verse 5, he highlights something that we can all see happening in the body of Christ today. He says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It is unfortunate that the church presently has adopted a pick and choose religion. They pick and choose what they want. They treat the word of God as a salad bar. Oh, I will take a bit of faith. Oh, but none of that holiness living. Oh, yes, people shouldn't steal. I will obey that. Oh, but fornication is an outdated concept. I won't obey that. Oh, yes, tithes and offering I will give to the Lord. Oh, adultery is outdated. God surely can't expect me to be with one person my whole life. He won't mind if I commit adultery. Picky, choosy Christianity. God does not negotiate his commandments. These people are Christian in name only. They feel free to be very spiritual, but sense no obligation to be biblical. They choose all of God's blessings and ignore his commands. These people are Christian in name only. They are Christians outwardly and not in reality. They profess Christianity, but their lives do not show it privately. They stand on pulpits and profess Christ, and they live a life that does not reflect the Christ they profess. And this is what the Bible tells us is going to happen to so many people the last day. Unfortunately, many professing Christians are falling into this category, embracing a particular theory of imputed righteousness while rejecting the power of the living Christ to produce the fruit of godly and holy character in their lives. Those who have a form of godliness are those who make an outward display of religion. On the outside, they walk like a Christian, talk like a Christian, they even look like a Christian, but they don't live like one. So I encourage you today not to be like this, but I encourage you to be sold out for Jesus, to make a commitment, to follow his laws and his ways, to not only be hearer of the word only, but to be a doer of the word, to put into practice the instructions of the word of God, Refuse to be a person who behind closed doors they live a life of sin. Behind closed doors they openly indulge themselves in sin. They present themselves as godly, but it is all for show. They speak of God and live in sin. And they are fine with that arrangement. They make an effort to appear holy on the outside, but they are evil. The false prophets, false pastors, all other agents of Satan that the Bible warned us about fall into this category. They always appear to be holy, but they have rejected the true holiness. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They pretend to be called by God, but they are not. And if you look at the landscape of the body of Christ, over the last two years, people with big names in the Christian community have been found in private sins. People who have major influence in the Christian community have had allegations against them surface, and those allegations have been proven to be true. This shouldn't shock you, 
but it should prove as evidence of the validity of the Word of God. The Word of God told us that in the last days these people will be there, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Time and time again the Word of God is being proven right. There is no other book with a level of prophetic accuracy as the Bible. The Bible says that in the last days people will have the form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof. They will be ungodly, but try to show that they are godly. This is that generation where people stand on stage to preach about holiness, whereas they are living in sin. Believers now use suits and ties to represent holiness in this generation. Acts 1 verse 1 says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Jesus didn't teach what he had not done. It was what he did that he taught. But some of the people we have in our generation are not doing what they are teaching. They ask people to do what they have never done or ever will do. They criticize people for the offense they are guilty of. They ask people to fast, but they eat behind the cotton. That anyone has a form of godliness does not mean that they are recognized by God. Jesus said that it is not all who call him Lord who will enter into the kingdom of God. This statement shows that there are people who call Jesus Lord out of pretense. They profess the Lord with their mouths only to deceive fellow humans, but their hearts are far away from God. Such people have the form of godliness but deny the power. They make outward display of religion. They present themselves as godly, but all for the show of it. Well, they can successfully deceive fellow humans, but God knows those who are his. He cannot be mocked. There is no act of hypocrisy that is hidden from him. The heart of everyone is bare before God, and the motive behind everything we do will be revealed on the day of judgment. There is a difference between a believer who is struggling with sin and someone who is living and enjoying the sin, but making a deliberate effort to portray themselves as holy. So today, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to live a holy life. On the day of judgment, you will be so glad you did. If you have been one of those people who have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, you can stop today. Live for Christ today. The fear of the Lord is what we need in today's society. Reverence and awe at the God who watches over you. Another medium by which people deceive themselves in these last days is through the manifestation of gifts. They have accepted preaching the word of God as a proof of holiness. They have the head knowledge of the Bible. They know the Bible inside out. They know the Bible better than you or I, but they remain in their sins, pulling the wool. And instead of them humbling themselves before God and to seek for his mercy for restoration, they will rather cover up their weaknesses with suits and good dresses. This was the exact problem Jesus had with the Pharisees that made him refer to them as hypocrites and whitewashed tombs. They appear to be good outwardly, but they are decayed within. While keeping away from immorality is important in general, Timothy was specifically advised to steer clear of those who claim to follow God, yet denied it through their false actions and teachings. Holiness has been redefined in our day and sin has been polished and presented in a way that is acceptable. Unfortunately, sin is now celebrated on a global scale. Worse still is the fact that the world has crept into the church and sinful practices are now being imbibed. It doesn't matter, they would say. In fact, the righteous is almost becoming odd in our societies. They are being ridiculed for their righteousness. However, there is a consolation for those who will choose to pitch their tents with Christ and remain uncompromising. Revelations 22 verse 11 and 12 says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. 
And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. When Jesus returns, he will reward the righteous, but punish the unrighteous. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish.